All righty, we'll be with you in just a moment where we'll be getting started with this particular edition of the Triple O podcast. Welcome to this edition of the Triple O Podcast. I am your host, James Edward Osler II. In this edition of the podcast, we are going to be covering the topics that were in the first two podcasts, which were more interview-centric. And in the first podcast, we covered some key topics. In the second one, we expanded those topics. In this particular third edition, of the Triple O Podcast, we're going to be talking from the key points of the second broadcast, which was more interview-centric and was not recorded. In this particular podcast, we're going to cover those topics, and we're going to go into them in detail so that this recording can be played back, and you can study those particular topics and have a better understanding of those key topics and what we were talking about in the first two podcasts. Once again, welcome to the Triple O Podcast. I am James Osler, your host. And without further ado, let's get into it. Our topic in this particular edition of Triple O is completing our divine purpose and destiny. Key topic, your brand in the 21st century. Again, your brand in the 21st century. Now, branding is a very diverse topic. It covers a lot. It is utilized in industry, enterprises, entrepreneurships. It covers a vast gamut of what a particular industry, and I'm going to say really industry leader, emphasizes because the brand is pretty much the company. When it comes to enterprises of self, self-branding. A lot of the things that were normally in industry now apply to the individual. In terms of the production opportunities that are there and the various formats and digitally and online these days, we have video, audio, text. The main thing to remember as a content producer in this digital world is that you are an ongoing producer of content. And that means you have to understand in this day and age, things such as intellectual property rights, what you can do, what you cannot do, how to protect yourself, but then how to publish and get outreach and own your own content. These are what we're talking about, as you can see on this slide, when we talk about branding and what are your resources and how far is your reach? Branding, the old and current state of affairs. Again, under that query of what are your resources and how far is your reach? In the marketplace previously, and I'm going to say before the digital internet age, in order to distribute, you had to go to a select few distributors. This gave the distributors vast amounts of power and being able to dictate to the content producer what 
the parameters were and what they would do within their range. If they were a publisher of a book, if they were a audio musical entity, things of that nature. And so you were very limited in what you could do. The internet exploded and vastly changed all of that. Now you as a producer of your own brand, of your own voice, of your own particulars, whatever it is that you do, whatever your given and God-given gift skills and talents are, would allow you to interface with the public with your own voice. You simply need to know how to protect it and you can do your own distribution basically. And that's the difference between the old marketing strategies and distribution in terms of branding and the current state of affairs. So what are some of the essential pieces that you need to know in terms of branding your particular voice, self, image, and whatever the career that you are aspiring to be in or are already in or plan to expand in terms of cult, uh, cultivating your gift, skills, and talents and coaching, teaching, consulting, doing all of those particulars. And the main thing is understanding the vehicles that you're putting out in the digital world, how are you going about doing that? And some of these things may seem redundant, but they're very important to note. And under a brand, everything is warehoused under that name. So you want to be consistent in what you put out, professional as possible. Protect yourself for various reasons so that you're not taken advantage of or have to seek legal matters. So you have to know your intellectual property rights. But also so that you have the control and you understand what you're broadcasting and putting out here over the internet. Some of the essential pieces is great to have a primary website. Uh, the type particularly doesn't matter, but it does uh, focus around you. And it ties into the second point, as we see on the slide, a professional social media outlet, outlet excuse me, that highlights your expertise. And that could be using LinkedIn or, or things of that nature. And that can serve as your primary website. This depends on how you're going to broadcast yourself. Remembering that as you produce content, you have to be aware of your intellectual property rights. That being said, you want to have a product protected product resource repository, depending on the type of content you're putting out making sure all of that has intellectual property rights. Great to have endorsement professionally and the things that you're doing. Your own endorsement also are things like your video and your resume uh, professionally. I highlight your gifts, skills, expertise, and talent. It's actually good to have intellectual property rights over that too, the formatting pieces, things of that nature. And then access to your content if you want to do some of the three things we talked about, coaching, teaching, consulting that has your branding, your logo type, again, with intellectual property rights and protecting yourself in the long term. So a key inquiry to think about as a question wrapped around what we just provided to you is have you considered holistically your brand? Getting into brand protection, the next piece, IP, and that is a short abbreviated symbol for intellectual property rights. Getting to know all of your intellectual property rights so that you can protect your work. Identifying intellectual property by type. Getting to know all the types of IP, which is very important, which will make you a much better brand keeper and a much better protector of the product that comes out of your brain. 
So we have uh, seven major types you really need to know. That's trademark, trade secret, trade dress, patent, copyright, creative commons, and the ISBN. The key inquiry here in terms of a question is, have you considered your IP across all of your brand's products? When you produce something, you have to protect it. And along those lines, you want to go back and make certain that you're not violating copyright when you're looking at an image. Understanding those seven types will help you, but also make certain that you're not also violating someone else's copyrights. I'm sorry, we live in the age of where content is king, persons everywhere are looking, especially struggling companies for the next hot thing. You have to protect yourself. And the way intellectual property works, it has to overlap. So you, if you're producing phonographs, audio recordings, you not only know, need to know about the Circle C copyright, you also want to know about the Circle P copyright for phonographic recordings and protect yourself accordingly. As you become a content producer, you automatically become a distributor and a publisher. It's really big when you get the ISBN, which is used not only for books, but a variety of content. They've been using it in the video world for years. Creative Commons is new. It allows you a greater control and to be able to put licenses out there. And so if someone should take your work, when you got these multiple layers and you take them uh, to court, you're highly protected. And trust me, if they're big, they're going to want to settle. If they're small, they're going to want to settle because they know they're in, they're in violation. And you yourself don't want to violate those areas. Uh, Duke University has a great piece that you can find online called Bound by Law. It's a digital comic they did out of the old Kirby Marvel style that allows you to study intellectual property, especially if you're an educator. If things are not in the public domain, that you can quickly be violating copyright law because you can't do some of the things you used to do. In this age where digital content, again, is king, every audience is a captive audience and it's an opportunity to make money. And major content producers who are struggling, who are doing things, are looking for those opportunities. You just can't go back and play a video to keep children occupied in schools. You're literally becoming a theater when you do that. And so you have to have permission to do that. And if you take care of the intellectual property rights on the front end, get permission of the co a company, do those things, because it could be marketing for them. And trust me, big brand distribu distributors have within their legal parameters reasons for that. You just have to reach out. Protect yourself, protect what you're doing, and the institution you work for, if you're a teacher, Professor, instructor will appreciate you for taking it on. Better to err, err, err on the side of being right than to make a mistake and create a massive legal matter. And that goes the same when somebody may contact you. If you have creative commons and all of the things we're talking about. The Lord's divine plan for blessing you and others in the earth. And we're looking at the key scripture from Exodus Four and two, and the Lord said unto him, speaking of Moses, if you know the story, what is in thine hand? And of course, he had a shepherd's rod. He was a shepherd when he saw the burning bit bush. Translation for us is, what do you have in your hands? Your gifts, your skills, your talents that the Lord can bless you with as you give it over to the Lord. Now, we are a Christian podcast, so we do things within the Lord's divine plan, and I am in the clergy. What is, and how does the Lord want you to utilize that to glorify the kingdom and to also bless you in the earth? What are you carrying right now as your gifts, skills, and talents that can be effectively utilized?
to build the kingdom and bless you and bless the world. That is what we mean by the Lord's divine plan for blessing you and others in the earth. So that brings up another talking point, a key point. How do you well, mostly share your expertise? And when I had conversations with our Lord and Savior and, and thinking about these, he reminded me of the most popular book on earth, the Bible. It's by book writing. Book writing shares your voice and can linger long past your time in the earth, can bring considerable wealth to you and your constituency, can establish and show your expertise. So you have to write. Everyone has a voice. Fiction, nonfiction. I'm an academic, publisher, and writer. And as a teacher, anointed to teach. It's one of my gifts from the Holy Spirit. And then I have to have books, guide books that lead. The book leads the course, which leads to blessing those who take the course. And so... Do not be afraid because everyone has a story, something of value to share. When you begin to think about writing your book, you need to think about narrowing your topic. Consider being concise. Think about your target audience that you're speaking to and the purpose of the book. As a producer of the book, you're much like a, a parent that is birthing a new baby. A lot of fun making the baby, writing the manuscript, but you also have to think about marketing. It is your task to mature and provide that book a vehicle so that it can replicate itself and have market value in the world. And there are several spaces that will allow you to do that electronically. We're talking about create space in the Amazon space, Lulu in the publishing space, creating your own store. So you can create your own distribution channels. And believe me, if the book is popular, subject matter is popular, if it's bringing a blessing to your target audience, major distributors will look for you, but you're already your own publisher and distribution network. And so... You can do it yourself, or you can enter into contract negotiations with them, but you're going to have a different point of view because whoever owns the ISBN owns that manuscript. You have your own ISBN, you're your own publisher. You're going to have an entirely different conversation if you so choose to go in that direction. Someone to have more control, but you're a publisher. You stand at the same level that major distributors have they just have a broader network. So our key inquiry in this particular line of thought is, what is your book's topic? And have you set a deadline to complete your book? And so one develops things in book writing and as a new author that come up as negative forces preventing you sometimes self-inflicted, sometimes externally inflicted. And that is, the first thing is you have to be committed to completing the book. Provide yourself with a long-term deadline and a target deadline to complete the manuscript. This is going to motivate you to push towards that. And even if it's not done by that date, you will accomplish so, so much work. And you will be fixated on getting that work complete. So in saying that, the two most important things that you must remember are getting yourself the timetable that we mentioned, and number two, making the topic relevant. Think about your audience first. You may be a poet, things of that nature, because in the manuscript world, the sky's the limit in terms of how you want to design the book. But think about your end audience and how they're going to be reading it. And you don't want to necessarily make that difficult. An easy read draws more audience. So our key inquiry to think about from that standpoint, again, is who is your target audience? 
who are you writing to and why? I'm an academic publisher, so I have a specific set of parameters for whom I'm working with and whom I'm writing to. As you become a publisher and you gather and gain ISBNs, when you fill out the formatting for that, you're going to have to address those areas anyway. But if you're doing that up front, it's going to make it easier, much easier to write your manuscript. When doing research writing, cite, 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 including yourself, to past or previous work. Plagiarism is not does not just have negative connotations. It's a good way of keeping us up front and relating messages back. And if you're not sure, cite anyway. No one has ever been accused of overcitation. It's lack of citation, even in speeches that get us in trouble. But when you overly cite, you're covering your bases. So if you're borrowing a quotation cite, if you are, and even state that you make editorial changes, it's a great way of protecting yourself and others. And it doesn't matter if it's a research article, but definitely in the publication world. Even if you're doing something innovative, State those things and remember, if you're working from your own previous work, cite yourself. If you're working from topics that have a lot of research, make certain that you're organizing your research. Make certain that it is legible. Look for editorial mistakes. Step away from the work, come back. And always check and make certain that you're on one accord with your writing pool and you're making certain that you're properly citing, whether it's Chicago MLA, um, I am in the social behavioral sciences, so we use the American Psychological Association APA format. And here we have an example here in terms of the center here, this would be more APA style. Uh, we have down here in four, it shows you now within Microsoft Word, it can actually, you have a style differentiator at this current time that can set you up properly. We of course know that we have artificial intelligence that has now uh, gotten into document and text, textual things and it can do great citing for you. It's always good if you have someone trustworthy who will not steal, for thing, steal things from you or if you hire an editor, you get an extra set of eyes on what you're doing, especially when it comes to research. So your key inquiry for this area is, are you writing from a research perspective? Are you doing your personal citations. This applies to academic and research. If you're doing fiction and non-fiction in certain areas, you have more leeway. But when you're doing something that is more academic and more something more research focused, you want to make certain you have your citations. You want to show where it's innovative. Use again your intellectual property rights and then move forward. Remember that there is more to book writing than just completing the manuscript. A book is only good if it is read and not by just the author. You have to have a plan. That is all from me, Osler 2024, Circle P, audio, phonographic copyright, Circle C, copyright. So if you're going to use this quotation, it is directly from me. Copyright. All rights reserved, 2024. This brings about marketing, the last phase of writing your book, where writing is not enough. 
you have to consider that this book is going into the marketplace. And you have to continue so that you have a lasting effect as you proceed forward. If you're creating an online marketplace, you can think about this, how you want to distribute your book. Just make certain you have your references if it's academic or research-based. All of your intellectual property rights, that's the ISBN, that's the universal book copyright, that is Creative Commons if you plan to distribute it in certain sectors, taking even the manuscript and federally mailing it back to yourself, that's the original, which is known as a poor man's copyright. And again, these all overlap. So if someone tries to take advantage of what you're doing, and, and it can occur. If something is popular and people are buying it, people want to steal it. So you want to be certain that in your distribution channels, you have effective protection. You don't haphazardly give it away unless that's a part of your marketing strategy. And you want to be certain that others aren't going to give it away because people, if they can get it free, they're going to take it free. This is something you have to consider. So you have to factor that if you have something so brilliant and innovative, then people need to pay for it. And the next logical step is once you've done that to produce a course, provide a reward for it. So now people can actually talk to the author, which is really what they want to do, especially if you're talking about knowledge that is so innovative, that's so groundbreaking that hasn't been talked about before. Consider all of these things when you are writing your book. And our final inquiry in this podcast, just think precisely, who is your market? You've got to consider these things as you move into the world of not just authoring, but publishing, marketing, and distributing your particular voice through your book. This concludes the third broadcast of the Triple O Podcast. I want to thank you for spending time with us and talking about all of the relevant topics of your brand. Take all of these things into consideration and you'll protect yourself, your intellectual property rights, and bless the world now and in the future. Thank you for spending time with us. Take care. Be blessed. Good day, good evening, or good night, depending on wherever you are in the world. Thanks for stopping by.